Daughters of Dave's Tackle Box. And here we are. It's Dave's Tackle Box on the 13th of October 2013. It's been like three weeks since I was last here. Uh, I've been on holiday via Oktoberfest. <laughs> it was quite good. I, in fact, I'll do this now because I did promise, I actually promised Sav that I would show you my genuine Oktoberfest hat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's face it, that's pretty snazzy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go, that's all you're seeing of that. <laughs> no, I didn't do the lederhosen. Um, I, yes, I've been around and about, and it was great. I've had a thoroughly good holiday. And uh, having said that, it is great to be back. Now, tonight's show uh, follows a week where, let's face it, it's been a pretty exciting week. We had the uh, vote in the EU Parliament on Tuesday, I think it was. Is that right, Dave? Was it Tuesday? It was, yes. It was Tuesday. I was in a different time zone and it was all weird. But uh, I, thanks to uh, my fantastic colleagues here at VTTV, I pretty much picked up everything as it was going along. It was fantastic. Um, and uh, I think we have quite rightfully celebrated a great victory. Um, we, If somebody had have asked us uh, if we'd have been happy where we are at this stage a month ago, uh, we, we'd have bitten their arm off and I, I think it, we've had a fantastic result. But of course, we we know it's not over yet. Uh, so we're going to be joined tonight by Dave Dawn. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at what the actual situation is now uh, with the TPD because it ain't gone away just yet. Uh, the things that we need to be watching for and uh, and have a little chat about what might happen next and what we as vapors uh, can be doing to try and influence the next lot like we influenced the last lot. But as ever, we'll start with the titles. And welcome, Dave. How you doing, mate? Hey, not so bad, Bonnie lad. Just not really jealous of where you've been. It looks as though it's been gorgeous and warm out there. But uh... Uh, at times it was. Yes, it was the rainy season though. So, oh. uh, so there was uh, one of the days. Actually, there were a few hours of pretty torrential rain, like sort of horizontal rain. But even that, you know, it's a little bit more bearable than the rain we have over here because it's kind. It's kind of like having a, a warm shower. Liquid sunshine, I call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, like, something like that. Yeah, so, liquid uh, sunshine. So Not yeah, like it, it is here. Yeah, it didn't spoil anything for us, you know. Um, you know, there, there were a couple of showers where you just stayed sat by the pool because, like, you know, the sun comes out five minutes later, you're dry again, you know. Yes. <laughs> did, did, just a daft question: Was there anybody in the pool when it started to rain? And did they, like some of the numpties that we were aware with? get out of the pool when it started to rain <laughs> well it's funny you should say that because yes i was a few times <laughs> <laughs> and uh they actually made us get out when they when the rain came i think they got worried about the the area being slippy and stuff uh, so they turf us out uh for a little while but uh it, yeah, like i say it wasn't a major problem 
health and safety gone mad, isn't it? It, it was a proper hotel. You could get beer 24-7 from one of the places, you know. Nice. So, you know, so it just meant moving and then moving back again. So. <laughs> as, long, as long as there's beer wherever they move you to, that's the important part. That's, that's, that's all you want, really. They'd actually bring so, beer to your room as well if you'd emptied the minibar, allegedly. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you would know from experience. No, no, course. no, I, I, I wouldn't know that, but no, no, apparently okay. I, I heard... Uh -huh. do that, so. What was the vapage like over there? Because it's queer in uh, Asia, isn't it? It, it is. I, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm just going to give a shout out to Jack Tan. Now, uh, you'll remember Jack. Jack is one yeah, yeah. of VTTV's oldest uh, viewers. In the days when we had 20 or 30 views for a show, Jack was in there. And, uh, and of course, he's Malaysian. And he was giving me some great tips for the holiday. Uh, not least of all about, you know about the vaping because it is actually the e-liquid is illegal so uh, I, I didn't get a chance to check it out but apparently there are quite a few uh, vaping shops in Kuala Lumpur I mm -hmm. wasn't really there long enough and I was doing the sort of you know spending time with the missus thing so I didn't actually manage to go and find any of these mod shops um, but so, but the hardware is quite popular there's there's there's, there's uh, a trade for it but e-liquid is, is not legal there Good so place. I I, I um, took some advice from well from various people, including Jack, on on how to get through. And I have to say, I um, we flew to KL and then a few days later flew out to Langkawi Island. So that was two flights, and then coming back there were two flights. Uh, so I I got four Malaysian Airlines flights uh, and didn't even get asked about my e sig. Uh, I, I was being a little bit careful. Um, you know, I wasn't advertising the fact, but let's just say I vaped all the way there and back again. So, uh, and uh, something worth uh, mentioning as well, uh, Malaysian Air um, is the first, it's, it's Malaysia Airlines, I, I believe is the correct name of the airline. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're the only people I've heard so far, when they do the uh, pre-flight announcements, so you know about no smoking and don't try it in the toilets, because the smoke alarms are set to really, really sensitive. You know the normal message they give you. Yeah. They actually then on the end of that say, and that includes electronic cigarettes. So that's the first time I've heard an airline actually state that. Um, so I was, you know, I was just careful basically. I uh, did my usual trick and got a window seat, and for, I had Fiona sat next to me as well. That meant I was pretty well invisible. Yes. Interference is always good. Indeed. <laughs> so, no, uh, I, I lost one e-cig on the entire journey, and that was because I'd left it in my pocket of my swimming trunks when I went in the pool. Uh, so you don't... Right, there's there's good piece of advice. <laughs> don't drop your e-cig in the uh, Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm actually thinking of suing safer cigs because nowhere in the instructions did it say, do not <laughs> swim with this product. And... <laughs> <laughs> I lost a, a, a Joy Ego battery and an EVOD coil. Obviously, the rest of the EVOD was fine once I tried it out. But <laughs> so, fortunately, I brought enough spares and supplies with me that I didn't even notice. But uh, but I placed an order for some more Ego batteries yesterday. Oh, well, fair <laughs> Actually, somebody's just brought up in chat, and I was wondering about it myself. If e-liquid's illegal over there, how do they get it? What do they use? Well, uh, I believe they import it. Um, um, well, don't we all? <laughs> if it's just just through one avenue or another. Uh, I'd, I'd, I've not asked Jack directly, but I, I think I remember him making comment about basically they, they, they import the stuff and hope for the best. Oh, right. So, and um, and just, just to bring you up to speed, Surface Sigs has uh, responded to your comment and basically they can't account for idiots. Long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T typical vendor stance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just for the record, in case anybody doesn't know, I am, of course, joking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, but uh, Daz will uh, also, know, Daz will be laughing because he'll also see the order that I place for the replacements. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. So did you, you, the EVOD head, once you'd replaced the coil, it didn't stink the chlorine or anything, did it? Uh, I don't, well, yeah, it probably did a bit, but uh, I binned it anyway because I've tried cleaning those coils just as an experiment in the ultrasonic cleaner in the mm -hmm. past. And although they, they do come clean, um, it's not so much the coil, it's the wick. Uh, they're never quite the same again. They're, they're, the drawer's always very tight. They never 
go back to where they were and they're so bloody cheap well yes <laughs> you know I mean I, I, you know I wasn't going to waste my holiday sitting there trying to wick an Evod coil when they're a couple of quid a piece I just well, dropped exactly. a new one in, exactly in fact I, I'm, I'm telling a slight porky here I didn't drop a new coil in the Evod at all but you've seen these smock things that look like the Evod things yes that one up to camera yeah it's almost indistinguishable from it's just got a black mouthpiece instead of a clear one the I'll ones. put that on in, put one of those on instead there you go and it works just fine yeah they are they're, they're actually nice those yeah yeah they are I, I and, couldn't um, call between that and the EVOD to be honest uh, it, it's uh, like two peas in the same pod mm -hmm. and and Keith's got one on the go at the minute and if it lasts anywhere as long as his first EVOD he'll get two months out of that right right you know, when uh, you sit back and think about it, a couple of quid two and a half quid for a coil a new coil for one of those things if you're going to get two months yeah it's truth well quite I, I changed the coil uh, once a week thereabouts because I use these egos quite a lot with the travelling um, yeah. all I took with me uh, on the holiday there was the MVP which I used in the evenings because uh, th th that was a ploy if they found the uh, ego batteries I could have argued that the MVP was a battery charger thing for the iPhone indeed yes yeah so I was what well, in practice I was using that in the hotel room where it was you know where, where nobody could see but yeah. then some the, the ego 650 milliamp hour batteries using those yeah. during the day because you can palm them can't you yeah pretty much so, pretty much and uh, yeah it worked, worked very well like I say about when I wanted where I wanted and that was pretty much everywhere there's a lesson here though isn't there I think there is. Um, because, I mean, you you were not normally one for, uh, you know, like under normal circumstances. Whenever we've been anywhere together, you're not one about being shy. and It's a different thing on a flight no. or a bus or something. But you generally speaking, you're not shy about using. But it does sound as though you felt slightly oppressed. Yeah. I, I, I You know, I mean, I'll come clean. I, uh, you, you're right. I, I'm not usually that overt because I'm normally sort of going through airports or in an office or something like that where if I made it an issue, you know, I might get told to stop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, 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 so I'm not adverse to being very sneaky and stealthy. But you're right. You know, um, uh, generally speaking, if I'm walking down the road or something, then I make no attempt to disguise what I'm doing. And of course, uh, in a country where you might get somebody tap you on the shoulder and say, "Oi, what's in that?" You do feel uh, a little bit more self-conscious. Um, and 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 you're dead right. I understand where you're going with that point. And you know, it does make you think, especially uh, you know, walking around Kuala Lumpur, um, and obviously lots of people smoking everywhere and everything. And I felt like the odd one out and was having to be quite sort of guarded in what I was doing. It did cross my mind more than once that if this vote goes the wrong way on Tuesday, this might be what it's like at home soon. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, that's the worrying part about all of this, in that if everything does go base over apex, mammary glands up, um, then, you know, we're going to be in, in pretty much the same situation as you found yourself in for a fortnight. Well, exactly. Where you know, um, anybody that sees you, I don't know, sees me walking down the street with something like that, blowing great billows out, it, it, that's almost yeah. going to be ended because they'll know at that point that I'm bringing stuff in illegally. And yeah, and, and, and that in itself, is there's two aspects to that as well because there's an argument about, you know, how, how willing people would be to enforce it. You know, are you likely to get stopped by a copper? in the streets if you're using an e-cig if they get banned or if they become medical products and you're using something that doesn't look like well let's face it any medicinalized e-cig is going to look like a, a cigar like in it so if you're using something like you got in your hand there that gatling gun thing yes um <laughs> you know uh you, you it's probably unlikely well. that, that that it's going to be enforced to the extent that somebody will come and say has that got nicotine in it well so <laughs> in, in, in a situation like that, I mean, and this, I'm, I'm going to hate myself in the morning, I know this, but in a situation like that, nobody would know the difference if I was using one of these. Well, quite. Quite. And that's we all true. Know what, we all know what that is. But let's be honest, that's probably what a medicinalised one would look like anyway. That's, I still haven't tried one of those, I've successfully avoided. <laughs> um... 
Yeah, uh, well, my, my, my information is that there are two currently on the cards, one of which is an actual e-cig. Right. Uh, that's being developed, well, developed, copied, cloned, marketed <laughs> by <laughs> McNeil, the Nicorette people. Right. Um, first generation jobby um, undergoing usability trials or user acceptance trials, I believe, um, right. and, and not going down awfully well because, like all first generation e cigs, they're crap. <laughs> and the other one uh, is Bats Vork, which uh, nice, Rhymes nice joke, doesn't it? Does a bit. Um, but that's an inhalator. It's a converted asthma inhaler, um, which is going to come in what looks like a 20 packet. And right. you push it down to recharge its reservoir from the um, the little pressurized tank that it's got in it. So that will yeah. squirt some, some stuff up. And they've, they've buggered about with the breath switch that you would get on a first generation ASIG. So when you take a drag, it squirts into your mouth. I've got to resist all the jokes when I do that. But basically, when you suck it, it squirts an aerosol into your mouth. Um, but that so you said aerosol, yeah? I did say aerosol. Yeah, thanks. Yes, yes. The, 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 thank you. For <laughs> I know my, my accent's weird. Yeah, um, I don't really but, want my aerosol squirted. If I'm honest, well, I'm quite happy know. with what I've got. You know, wait till you get to my age. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the that uh, the suck stick has the same form factor as a, a cigarette and I would imagine will come in quite similar livery but we'll find out soon enough. But it is nice to note that the MHRA gave uh, Nico Ventures BAT and Kind Consumer that triumvirate a right kicking for releasing details of it to its investors and thus allowing prior information to get onto the market. Um, I don't think the MHRA relishes transparency somehow. And, They're uh, not the most transparent organisation, are they? Well, you can see right through them, but that's not because they're transparent. <laughs> yeah, they're not intentionally transparent. No. But it, <laughs> no, no, not where not it counts. <laughs> not even remotely would be the word. But so, I, yeah. I, you know, the point I was, I was starting to make there was, you know, I mean, you, you could. It, it's a question. It's a genuine question. I don't know the answer to. If they decide these things are going to be regulated as med medical products, and we're going to go on to, to discuss the, 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 the very real possibility of that still happening. Um, question one is, will it be enforced? But the, the, the second sort of aspect, we were talking about, uh, you know, sort of being conscious about using these things and what have you. That, but they're also going to be that's, they're going to be automatically kind of demonised. So even if you don't face any legal action, people are going to look at you suspiciously People are going to, uh, you know, if you go around, to, well, if you go into a vaping pub and somebody asks you about one of these things at the moment, then everything's cool. You might like be going to a friend's house or something like that. But if if, if the uh, MHRA managed to create this sort of, um, this 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 uh, appearance, this, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? If, if, if they manage to convince people that they're not necessarily safe unless they've come from Glaxo, um, you know, then actually there's going to be a social aspect to that as well. Yeah, it'd, it'd be pretty much like walking down the uh, the main street in Sunderland with a bong on. <laughs> yeah. And I've got to be careful how I say that because I say Mr Dibley's in chat. Yes, yes, because yes. there's not many entendres you could go with from that, is there? No, there's pretty much only one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, old if, Finbar, if you, Finbar Saunders there, and he's double and he's double on yeah. Yes, <laughs> if, if I mean it, it, it is seriously, it would be like walking around with a bong going, um, you know, and and and, and flicking your hash in, um, if that's that's the route that they want to go down. And I've got to say, um, you know, the likes of Ash and Cancer Research UK are not helping on this one because of the, the U-turn that they performed between two thousand seven two thousand and eight and now is just ah, it's completely wrong and they do need to be uh, brought to account for that I feel yeah I can't argue with the word of that look that takes us up to about where the first break should be um, so uh, when we get back let's start so let, let, let's just reflect on on what's happened during this week and uh, now some of this sort of uh, excitement and the, the joy of the victory has calmed down and, 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 and take stock a bit 
on mm. uh, on where we're at and what's coming next. Uh, we'll be right back about a minute and a half, I think. See you in a bit. And welcome back. Right, so on Tuesday then, uh, the 8th of October, I mean, this is a day that would, should make us immensely proud, right? It's a historical day. It is. Uh, there's no precedent for this having happened before. And, and just to explain, I was talking with Dave earlier, and, you know, and we've had this confirmed, that there, there really hasn't been an instance where uh, a proposal in the EU has been affected and basically had its entire course changed through the voting members of the EU contacting their MEPs and saying what they thought. Public opinion has really had a result here and, and, and many people would say a result that we had no right to expect. I mean we know that, that you know that we know that, that we were in the right um, but there's a lot of laws that go through that aren't right aren't there? When that bloody uh, EU political steamroller starts moving, it's very difficult to to, uh, to 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 actually affect its direction at all. But we did it, and I think we've got to be immensely proud of that. And a lot of the MEPs, um, just just a quick sort of note here: if you're not on Twitter and you're interested in following what's going here, get on Twitter. It's where it all happens. It get really is. This is where we met and got our message over to a few MEPs who ultimately went along, drafted this Amendment 170 and have kept us in the race. Um, just, I just want to chat a little bit about that, Dave, but I also want to make the point as well that, that you know, uh, I just want to pick up on a few comments that I've read uh, on the UK Vapors Forum and everything. And as things stand, OK, uh, the EU Parliament have that uh, they've they've accepted the amendment that was drafted by uh, Chris Davis and Rebecca Taylor and the ALDE group I think is that the ALDE, name yeah it was Fred, yeah. Frederick Arias is down as the yeah. uh, the main author of it backed up by Chris um, Rebecca Martin Callanan um, and, and various other uh, members yeah and, and thank God they did but I've read a little bit um, uh, that just just since I got back the other day, really. Um, and on one comment that, that, that I think is very fair is people who are accustomed to buying sort of 72 milligram nick liquid uh, and doing DIY, as indeed I've done myself, all of this came from 72 milligram uh, liquid and I mix myself. That's basically gone now. Potentially, yes. Yeah, and, now, and, and I think that word potentially, is it, that takes us nicely to, to where we want to go with this. As things stand, if, if everything stays as it is proposed and that comes to force of law in, in each of the member states, and that, that's a big if, <laughs> um, mm. we can get anything up to 30 milligram juice uh, that won't be classed as a medical product. Um, uh, but anything over that 
it's basically going to disappear if it goes through but Dave as you understand it uh, what what happens next now there's this process of negotiation yeah what's, that's what's that all about well that that's that's actually called a trilogue or trialogue depending on on who you listen to um, and what it means is that the the committee from the Parliament, which is headed up by Mrs. McAvan, ably assisted by Karl Heinz Florence, uh, Mr. Schlieter, um, Martin Callanan, Frederica Reyes, and an unnamed as yet representative from the EDF group, which includes UKIP, um, they go and negotiate with both Commission and Council. And Council is made up of, of the health ministers of uh, all the various different member states. They go basically and say, Here's, here's what happened, this is what got passed, off you go and uh, come back and tell us what you think. And I believe four meetings have been scheduled. One has already been had, which was basically when the, the negotiations were open and the text uh, of the Tobacco Products Directive as voted on by plenary was handed over. And now council's got to look at that and decide what in amongst all of that it doesn't like. Now, there's all kinds of rumours floating around. There are rumours that Linda McAvan and Karl Heinz Florence, particularly, will buckle very easily without much pressure. Just, just to, to explain the point there, they've now got to go and talk to people like Jeremy Mean, uh, the British Secretary of State for Health. Well, it actually should refer it back to the National Parliament and the Scrutiny Committee. They should. Uh, so we would be in the hands of the likes of Miss Soubry again. No, uh, Miss Soubry's gone. Has she gone? She's gone. I didn't. Jane, I did not know that. Jane Ellison has replaced her. Miss Soubry is now in charge of tanks, apparently because they're green and the people that drive them when they're dressed for an evening meal have gold on them, like a pack of San Moritz. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so she finds those very attractive um, so she, she's yes she's now in charge of waging war God help us all I sincerely hope that she doesn't like red otherwise I have visions of a big red button being pressed when it didn't ought to be and if you are no. a foreign dictator now's a good time to invade yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah um, okay so, <laughs> so the, um, the, the, the bottom line on it is in theory um because she's brand new to the post, she's got to get up to speed damn quick because it'll be she who represents the UK in the council. Yeah, OK. Now, that's an interesting point because the scrutiny committee will quite possibly, or should actually, now that this has come back, insist on a reserve until the UK parliament has set its position that's yeah yeah one possible avenue that it might go or she may just do what Subri did and go steaming in San Ferry on yeah. cold the sack and uh, well you know what I mean uh, that's probably just, unlikely in fairness isn't it because I would, Anna yeah did get a bit of a kick in for that didn't she you would she uh, apparently that was that was a severe a very severe kicking uh, the, certainly the, the, the televised bit was and you can only imagine that what happened uh, off the cameras would have been a little more blunt uh, uh, yes so, <laughs> so and uh, you know I mean I'd like to say uh, that I, I, I feel for her but I don't because what she did was reckless and irresponsible frankly um, um, but but the the, the, uh, the, the the fact of the matter is now that a committee sort of headed up by uh, McAvan is going to talk to governments like the British and currently uh, at, at, at face value at least their position is that they still want some kind of regulation they want some kind of medicinal regulation medicinal yes. regulation yes so uh, when you were saying that there are rumours that they may buckle under the pressure the, 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 the suggestion is that when uh, if, if a government has a mind to be chasing medical regulation they'll put pressure and the likes of Linda, they're not going to fight that and defend the plenary vote too hard, are they? Well, that's the rumour that's flowing around. Although she did say, uh, when she got the, um, the the vote to allow her to do that, the mandate, um, that she would 
represent the, the vote as it was cast to the hilt. Now, I would hope. Yeah, that that, she to, would. to me, that's a, that, that just that, that that doesn't sit right with the process of negotiation, which by definition means you have to give a bit. Well, yes, but you see, there are other areas that she can give a bit and take a bit in. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's actually what what the uh, the TPD vote managed to do was to sneak standardised packaging in yes. under the radar because that's effectively what they've got. Even though it's not called that, that's effectively what they've got. When you're talking in terms of 65% of the pack covered in warnings and any branding is at the bottom, there's no room there for anything other than... The only thing they didn't do was specify the colour of the pack. Otherwise, yeah, because they're not packaging. calling it standardised packaging at all, are they? No, but that's what they've, effectively that's what they've got. The only difference will be in that little... 30% down at the bottom where you've got, you know, the, the, the name of the fags, if you like. Um, there'll be a different colour on each of those. But unless all of the display cabinets and what have you are changed, you won't see that at the bottom anyway. Um, so they've, they've managed to get standardised packaging more or less by the back door without calling it that. Had it been called standardised packaging, I don't think that would have gotten through. Um, Funnily enough, and I, if you wondered what I was doing there as you were talking, I was just looking up my local Labour MEP's um, Facebook page. Glennis Wilmot is calling it standardised packaging. She is, yes. So, she knows what they got. Yeah, so uh, uh, she says she's supporting standardised packaging. Yes, well, I mean, that, as I say, effectively that's what they got. I think um, Ms McAvan and her allies are very disappointed with the vote on uh, on e cigs um, she's not keen on that at all but she's got to take into account that it was voted through with a qualified majority the simple majority was was all that was needed as in you know 51 to 50 that's the simple majority but it actually went through on a ratio of three to two yeah which is a qualified majority right and that that means that Parliament is insistent upon it that's not just few by the skin of yeah. your teeth. That is, hey, this is what we want and yeah. this is what you've got to get. So the good part about the negotiations is that people who are without doubt on the side of the vapour, the likes of Martin Callanan and Frederica Reitz, are going to be there and they will be watching like hawks. They will be listening and they will be taking part in the negotiations. And I'm also hearing that uh, Aldi Group members that, that we've all been in touch with and that we all read on Twitter are also keeping an eye on what's going on and keeping their ear to the ground to find out what the scuttlebutt is. In other words, the message to Mrs McCavan and uh, Karl Heinz Florence and Mr Schleter, Schilder Schleter, is you are being watched. Yeah, and if yeah, you yeah, care yeah. too easily, we will all know the Labour vote in the UK is on a knife edge anyway. And doing the wrong thing now would topple it. Yeah. Just wanted to say that because it seems like a good idea to remind so. them that vapors are voters. I and think we so. can be very loud. I mean I was uh, I've been having a go at Glennis on her Facebook page. <laughs> she hasn't replied to me yet, but a few of her sort of supporters have taken up issue with me. But I've had the last word and nobody's come back to me in the last couple of days. So Oh I've do been... tell, do tell. I, um, I I just uh, sort of she she posted up some tosh about the fantastic victory. Uh, if I've got it in front of me because I was just checking that thing on the standardised packaging, and Glennis is saying that today's vote will go. So, this was posted on the eighth, obviously. Today's vote will go some way to help protect children from being targeted by tobacco companies. Although the Tories succeeded in watering down the proposals. Eh? The British government has said it backs Labour's proposals. Now we need to see them deliver, is what she said. So I wrote her a nice little note about oh, I'll never vote for her again. I never voted for her before, but don't tell her that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, and uh, a couple of her uh, sort of hangers on decided to take issue uh, and were asking, were telling me that only a fool would, uh, would not want medical regulation for these things. So I got into the usual discussion argument that you have with the uninformed about yes. 
why it doesn't need to be medical regulation. In fact, they could just enforce what we've already got and then the world would be a better place. Um, and it ended up with me posting a link to uh, Clive Bates' blog and that was Game, Set and Match. They haven't replied since. So. Yeah, I'm not surprised if they've read through that. Well, then they lot. did accuse me of being an employee of VTTV, so therefore I couldn't be uh, impartial. Really? Apparently. Okay, they, they obviously have no idea what VTTV is then. No, so I, I told them that too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're quite lengthy posts actually. Anybody that follows me on Facebook, I mean, feel free. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Yeah, um, go for But it. that took me ages on an iPhone. And the spelling's not bad considering. Hey, I tell you what, the, the, the iPhone's not that difficult to type on if you turn it in landscape mode. Depending upon the size of your thumbs, of course too big my thumbs I'm afraid yeah well my left one is since I got stung by a wasp on it don't ask <laughs> just all I, all I will say to anybody watching if you've had your towels hung over the radiator and the windows open shake them before you get into the bath never mind when you get out <laughs> and I'm just going to thank god it was me thumb it stung <laughs> what are you laughing at <laughs> I don't really know <laughs> It could have been very, very nasty, that. Uh, it could have been. Could have been. Mine, you know, it might have been one or two people pleased, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been stung. Come and suck the poison out. Uh, okay, yeah. right. Well, so so we're in the position now where we, we've won our first battle. And, mm. and as I say, we should be rightfully proud about that. But it ain't over. Um, there's going to be negotiation with, uh, with each uh, government now, effectively. Um, on, on, a, on, a, on a corporate basis, I mean, uh, council will meet again, and I believe their meeting is this week. So they'll be looking at uh, what's come out of plenary this week on an initial basis and coming up with their common position, if indeed they can. not We do know some reservations will be filed. Yeah. Um, and, and we need to make sure that our governments know what we think, right? Oh, yes, without a shadow of a doubt. And the way to do that is through our MPs. Mm-hmm. So if you... Uh, everybody, you did a fantastic job on the MEPs. Now it's time to really turn the screw on your MP as well. They need to let uh, the, 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 the ministry, basically, the Department of Health ministers, know that this is not a clear cut as they would like it to be. Because there's a good chance they're going to be pretty uninformed on this. It's 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 a pretty good bet that if Anna Subri is anything to go by, and she thought e-cigs had fallen out of the TPD, yeah, they will have next to no clue. Um, there'll be one or two that are reasonably well informed and have an opinion in one direction or another, but the vast majority will know very little about e-cigs. What they will know is probably the kind of stuff that came out of the one show, which I've now watched on iPlayer. I, I haven't actually seen this yet. Save yourself the time. Really? Is it? Is yeah. it? Is it typical? Um, kind of all glossed over the surface. Nothing in any depth. No real information. Um, Alex, whatever you call her, the Welsh lass, holding holding a cart up and calling it the battery, and holding the battery up and calling it the atomizer. So another um, well-researched piece, then. Absolutely. And with uh, <laughs> Helen, whatever she's called, that wrote uh, Bridget Jones' uh, diaries, because apparently Mr. Darcy's died or something, spoiler alert, um, or will be dying in the... Whatever. I don't um, even know what that she, means. No, neither do I. She, <laughs> the, the, Helen, whatever she's called, uses them, and even she didn't bother to put Alex right. I mean, so she was kind of, um, yeah... Um, and Graham Norton was sat there going, well, just just put it in your e bubble and let it go. And he was about the only one that was talking any sense. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say I'm from the same part of the world as that <laughs> nugget that presents it, Matt Baker. Yeah. The old one wasn't much better, to be honest, but Adrian Charles used to present that, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he's not a good advert for our region either, really. He's well, not a good go. advert for much, well, but there you go. Okay, when we, we're going to take another break now, but when we come back, uh, uh, we're going to show that actually there is some 
much better informed coverage starting to make the mainstream media now. Indeed. Uh, I've got a little article from uh, the Times that we can look at and the Financial Times. Yes. And uh, But then we've also got the, uh, the latest word from the MHRA. Let's yes. have a look at that after the break. See you in a bit. of Dave's Tackle Box. Iveber and Iveber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iveber.co.uk and iveber-alexa.co.uk. Iveber and iveber-alexa.co.uk are proud sponsors of vapertrails.tv. in the room and welcome back okay so uh just before the break there we were talking about the one show and uh it sounded like it was just guff frankly pretty much yeah what what, what you would call uh, a powder piece right okay so uh, i shall not go out of my way to uh, to see that then no nah. wasn't going to anyway really <laughs> um but yes i said uh, that there's been some more positive coverage now uh, there was a piece in the times uh in the last day or two i think and uh, it was written by let's just get this on screen there we go a guy called matt ridley and this is matt's blog uh, if you want to have a read of matt's blog uh, the url is rationaloptimist.com and today the 13th of october this is his latest blog and it is basically the piece he ran in the Times, which I didn't see. Um, but it really is a fantastic piece. And I won't read the whole thing because it's quite long. But it's um, to me, it's an example of a couple of pieces that I've seen recently where uh, bloggers and reporters are actually taking the trouble to understand what the hell's going on here. That it isn't just the sensationalist headline stuff that most of the, the big media uh, outlets have been using. Um, and, and I mean, the headline to this piece, the, 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 the actual title is Don't Discourage Vaping. I mean, what a cracking start, <laughs> you know, uh, to recognise the term. Um, what he basically does in this piece is he picks up um, uh, something analogous. And I'll read you the first couple of paragraphs because it kind of sets the scene for the rest of it. He says, should shampoo be classified as a medicine and prescribed by doctors? It can, after all, cause harm. It can sting your eyes. And a recent study found traces of carcinogens in 98 shampoo products. Sure, shampoo can clean hair if used responsibly. But what's to stop cowboy shampoo makers selling dangerous shampoo to the young? Far too many shampoo manufacturers try to glamorize their product. Time for the state to step in. <laughs> he then asks the question, is that far-fetched, if only? This week, the European Parliament sensibly declined to accept the European Commission's directive to regulate as medicines those glowing-tipped electronic nicotine vapour dispensers called e-cigarettes. The British government astonishingly expressed its disappointment at the vote and still intends to treat cigarettes as medicines from 2016. We believe these products need to be regulated as medicines and continue to make this point during further negotiations, a spokesperson for the Department of Health said. 
who's we by the way and he goes on then to talk about uh, the way that the e-cig market is growing um, and he's estimating it's worth more than two billion pounds this year he doesn't specify whether that's UK or what um, he talks about the evidence that's been presented um, uh, and makes the point that e-cigarettes are saving far more lives than shampoo and probably doing no more harm it's and exactly. this is worth the read like i say it's rationaloptimist.com it's a very well thought through article it's really sort of um it's very pro e-cig it's very anti uh, medicinalization of e-cigs and he sets out some really good reasons to why he thinks that medical regulation is inappropriate um in the course of this, he links to um, an, arg uh, an article in the Financial Times. Now, uh, this, uh, I can put the URL into the notes on YouTube and on the, the show page on our site later. Um, but this is a piece written uh, sort of immediately after the vote on the 8th. Uh, and it's well worth a read. Now, it is behind a paywall, but I learned uh, the other day that if you take a free registration to the Financial Times, you can look at eight articles mm -hmm. uh, online uh, before they come back and want money from you. Um, so uh, if you read eight articles, make this one of them, because it, it again, is very well researched. And I won't, um, I won't read the whole thing out, um, but let's just, uh, just take a few snippets from it. Uh, it, it it again it talks about um which is nice to see it talks about uh the 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 uh, big tobacco involvement and uh the, the, there is this myth uh particularly in a lot of the stuff the the eu have been putting out that that uh big tobacco are are the main players in the easy market and we know that that just simply isn't true and this acknowledges that quite well um it says until this year the industry has been dominated by startups most of which import e-cigarettes from china and the rest of asia to sell in the uk and europe which is absolutely correct uh it then goes on to mention that the big tobacco companies including bat lorillard and imperial have acquired e-cigarette companies or introduced their own brands um but 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 it makes the point rather well that that it's not big tobacco are not the main players in this and that actually it'll be it'll be what um, um, Martin uh, Cannellan referred to as SMEs the small to medium sized enterprises that yes. will be affected you know and and like the guys that sponsor these shows uh, like the guys that we buy all of our gear from they're the people that would be hurt and that actually some of the intention is misdirected so that that's a piece that's well worth reading and that's by Joshua Chaffin uh, who is uh, their Brussels correspondent and a guy called Duncan Robinson. So something else that's well worth a read. Um, again, it sort of uh, uh, quotes the uh, a Department of Health spokesman. And we couldn't mm. actually find the, the quote, could we, Dave, when we went looking? No, um, no. But just 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 for a sense of balance here you know just uh, we are getting sort of seemingly more and more popular support in the press now but i also ought to show this uh, now this this actually came out the day after the vote so it might be old news for some people but um this is the latest statement from the mhra and it's quite short so i'll read it out but if anybody's in any doubt about where the mhra are currently standing on this uh, i'll read the whole lot because it's short um, as I say, it came out the day after the vote and mm -hmm. is a response to the uh, plenary vote. It says, in December 2012, the European Commission published a proposal to revise the Tobacco Products Directive, which aims to address a number of areas in relation to tobacco products, including nicotine-containing products such as electronic cigarettes. Uh, interesting that that now becomes part of the opening paragraph. It's no longer an afterthought at the end. It's quite clearly one of the main issues with the TPD for these guys. Yes. On the 8th of October 2013, the European Parliament voted on the draft directive as a whole and the Commission's proposal to regulate electronic cigarettes as medicine, medicines was not supported by a majority of MEPs. 
As Dave pointed out, it was a qualified majority. A majority supported using a mixture of tobacco regulation, for example, controls on promotion, and medicine-style regulation, for example, reporting of adverse reactions for all nicotine products, including medicines, and applying medicines regulation to products that could be the same that make medicinal claims. The European Parliament vote is one stage in the legislative, legislative process, that's easy for me to say, which is still not complete and there will be further negotiation. The MHRA continues to believe, this is, this is the point for me, the MHRA continues to believe that medicinal regulation of nicotine containing products is the best way to deliver a benefit to public health. We will be continuing to encourage companies voluntarily to seek a license for their products so that they can be seen to meet appropriate standards of safety, quality, efficacy and could be sold and supplied, including on prescription, according to the NICE public health guidance on reducing the harms of smoking. More information on nicotine containing products is available on our website and that goes, that's a link back to the same old crap that's been there for ages. Yes. So, um, so the the key things in there then is they still think um, that medicinal regulation is the way to go, um, and well, it's that, funny that, that, that they then go on to say we'll be continuing to encourage companies voluntarily to seek a license. Um, yes. So it, that, that I, to I, me reads like we're still going to try and push for medical regulation. Uh, you, but we're gonna, we've kind of got a contingency plan, if not. Well, can you can you see that little attempt at marketing in there? There's that little attempt at marketing in there, trying to win hearts and minds of those who would continually profess to be hard up and parish damned, boracic lind, skint, penniless, that you would be able to get them on prescription, so you can have your e-cigs for free. If only you would stop telling us not to regulate them as medicines. We'll give you them for nothing. If, if you, Just let us do it. Let us do it. Let us do it. You can have them on prescription. For Seriously, we're worried. No, please don't do it. Please don't do it. But it, 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 it's a desperate, to me, it's a desperate press release, that. It's a press release that says, look, um, Parliament knows what it's talking about. We don't like what they've done. We really do want to press ahead with this. And we are aware that if the EU says no, we can't. Because they can't now. You um, think? You, yeah. I, I, well, see, because I, I don't get that sense reading that. I mean, I, I really hope that you're right, in a sense. Um, but well, the, the, the bottom line on it is, had, had we not needed some form of protection, I would certainly have been campaigning to have ESIGs thrown out of the TPD en masse. I mean, it was yeah. never going to happen, but that's what I'd have been looking for. And that was a fallback position for me. As it stands... Amendment 170, although by no means perfect and far too limited in my view, at least it protects electronic cigarettes and says they cannot be classified as medicines unless they are presented as such. And that's the important part. Yeah. They cannot be classified as medicines. And that means the MHRA can bluster and spurtle and spit as much as they like if it goes through as it currently stands, if council backs parliament, the MHRA doesn't have a leg to stand on. They can't do it because to do so would be to go against EU law and put them outside the whole of the of the single market. Yeah, and that, and that's where I I I I'm a little bit sceptical. Um, you know, I was just saying there, I don't share your confidence. That, that, that's where I'm less confident than, than, than you're sounding there. I'm because, not saying I'm confident. Because I'm not sure. Yeah, let, let's face it, the, 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 the council representation for Britain is going to be heavily influenced by what the MHRA say. And, and you, you know, you have to assume that the MHRA are not flying totally solo on this. Oh, no, they're not. I mean, they've got the likes of Martin, Martin McKee back in them. And... Um, Simon Chapman, that ex execrable Londoner that's now an Australian, um, their voices are, are heard loud. But the fact of the matter is, we've got some very, very loud voices in the UK as well, and people who are extremely well respected within the tobacco control community, people like Peter Hayek, 
for instance, Jacques Luzek, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's the people at Ash and Cancer Research UK, as I alluded to earlier, in 2007, 2008, their stance was that NRT should not be medicines, that medicinal regulation was stifling innovation and preventing a massive uptake in NRT, which they thought it would have. And they were pushing, as was the Royal College of Physicians, for there to be a third way, yeah. a nicotine regulatory body, if you will, that would regulate every nicotine-containing product, including tobacco cigarettes, pipe tobacco, cigars, snus, snuff, everything that has nicotine in would have been regulated by this authority. And it would have been, the RCP was saying, that there is a continuum of risk. So on this side, at 100, you've got lit tobacco in the form of cigarettes. This side, at 1, you've got the likes of NRT, snus, e-cigs, that kind, although e-cigs weren't around at the time. That was the continuum of risk. There's nothing in the middle. It's, it's pretty much all or next to nothing. Everything that's, that's not lit has a much, much lower risk profile. And th at that point in time, 2007, 2008, both Ash and Cancer Research UK were 100% behind that. It's only since ASIGs came out that they've done this 180 and they want to see them medicines. And I, and let's say that, that's one hell of a turnaround, it. isn't it? It is. It's a massive turnaround, and I don't understand why they've done it. Well, well if you were cynical, you might say it's because Patches never stood a chance of harming their funding, and these things might. Um, you, if but you, you would only say that if you were really cynical. Well, if you were really, really cynical, you would think that if they came out in support of e-cigs as non-meds and NRT as non-meds, that they might get less funding from pharmaceutical companies. Well, the, the, and... Don't the MHRA get totally funded by pharmaceutical companies, as I recall? Not only totally funded, but also staffed by them. There is that too. <laughs> it's talk about a revolving door policy. You come out of pharmaceuticals into MHRA, and when you leave MHRA, you go back into pharmaceuticals, only 20 steps up the ladder from where you started. And Just that is... Does it wind you up as much as it winds me up that uh, during the course of all of the, the, the talking that's been going on since January, February of this year, you know, there's been the accusations of astroturfing and uh, the suggestion that as a community, there's no way that we could be as clued up as we were and as active as we were without funding from big tobacco. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet it's actually above board that the people that we're currently arguing with are totally funded by Big Pharma? Even worse than that, Cancer Research UK indulged in a bit of its own astroturfing. Unfortunately, the one of the people that they chose to use for their astroturfing efforts on Twitter wasn't bright enough to take out the placeholders for MEP's names <laughs> and left it in. So got caught out very quickly when you see, uh, you know, at Rebecca Taylor, followed by at insert MEP's name here. <laughs> With, I think there was only two or three, uh, two or three tweets that she was supposed to be putting out. They were they were very well crafted, if totally erroneous and completely wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, th they're doing this themselves all the time. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that a lot of the smoke-free partnerships are astral turf organisations for pharma. They're certainly, definitely not grassroots movements because most people couldn't give a tuppenny toss, frankly. Well, quite. That That's very valid. OK, so we've actually got to the end here. Have we? And uh, would you believe it's like one minute to... Good so, Lord. Um, I think, I think um, uh, first of all, I just want to say thanks very much, Dave, uh, for, for coming along. I know you've been... Um, I know a lot of people have done this already, but I get. I, I want to add to it and just say thank you for your tireless uh, campaigning and work you've done. I know how your life has been over the last six months, and uh, you know, uh, thanks. 
basically for everything you've done for for our cause. Um, Dave, it's, it's, and... it's 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 been a, it's been an absolute privilege to be involved with it all. And but the the, the great thanks really needs to go to everybody out there that's done all the hard slog and talk to everybody and i would echo that too i would echo yes. that too but it needed somebody to coordinate things and you've done that role fantastically mate and you. uh you know it's in no small part the results that, that that we landed on tuesday was down to yourself and and uh, a few of your colleagues in the likes of clive bates and jerry simpson uh, stimson and so on and and, and, uh, and don't forget Sav in all of this. And She's, don't forget Sav. I exclude rest, nobody. I, th I think the it's team. The I team's think been fabulous. It, we've got to take a collective pat on the back for for, for for the result that we got. Group hug. Exactly, group hug. Um, and now get that out of your system because we've got another one to win now. <laughs> yeah. So Very let's good. get on to your MPs. Uh, right to them dot com, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. That that will tell you the name of your MP. Personalised letter. Uh, the point has been made a few times that it was the personal stories and the personal, uh, if you like, pleas that have registered with the politicians. You know, um, you know, petitions. We've said this many, many times on VTTV. They're all well and good, but your your personalised story, your own uh, heartfelt plea uh, to your to to your local politicians uh, are worth. 10,000 uh, uh, petition um, petition signatories is what I'm trying to say. Yes. Um, so let's not let up. Uh, we've we've had a, we've won a good battle there, but the war isn't over. Bit of a cliche, I know, but it's a fact. It's a fact. It's true. Let's keep on them. Let's beat the next lot as well. We can do it. Um, I'll be back again next Sunday. Uh, thanks for watching. It's been great fun being back. I'm back to work tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. We've got an early oh. flight. Uh, Dave, once again, thanks, and say good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks for having us. Thank mm -hmm. you.